Hello and welcome to the Made by Mumino podcast. My name is Catherine and this is a knitting podcast and I believe episode 13. Episode 13. Goodness, I think I've been doing this for about six months now. Time flies. <laughs> Anyway, so my name is Catherine and you can find me on Instagram as Mumino, on Ravelry as Mumino and on, well here obviously is Made by Mumino. I'm also on Ko-fi as Made by Mumino and I have an email address as well. So for this episode um, and all episodes, everything I talk about is linked below. Um, I also put chapters in. So feel free to skip through any bits that you're not interested in. And um, yeah, so I mostly talk about test knits that I'm doing, any bits and pieces that I'm up to, but I also sometimes do little tours of um, cities near me. So I live in the northwest of Germany in a city called Mönchengladbach, which is kind of halfway between Dusseldorf and the Dutch border. Uh, so we live really close to... Uh, Belgium and France and uh, the Netherlands, obviously. Um, so I often take little day trips with my partner um, to visit yarn shops, <laughs> although he's always happy when we go to a city without so many yarn shops. Um, and uh, yeah, so I often take you on my little journeys with me. At the beginning of this episode, you will have seen some footage of Aachen and I went to Aachen a couple of weeks ago. I go there fairly regularly. It's a really really beautiful city. If you're ever in this region, I strongly recommend a visit. Um, not only is the architecture beautiful and uh, there's a gorgeous old cathedral and really cute little streets with lots of little shops and just nice places to have coffee and everything. Not only that, there are two excellent yarn shops in the centre. Sadly, one of them is closed for the summer holidays at the moment, so I was only able to visit one yarn shop on this visit. <clears throat> but that just means I have to go back sometime to do another visit. Sad times. I'll get over it. <laughs> I'll stay strong. <laughs> so yeah, I also, um, I've been really busy the last couple of weeks. The weather is gorgeous here. Uh, so I'm filming very early in the morning. It's not even eight o'clock in the morning on Monday, the 12th of August. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's the middle of the summer and it's hot. Well, I think it's hot. It's going to be sort of mid-high 30s today, so I thought I'd get filming out uh, early, as early as possible. Mid-high 30s in Fahrenheit. Honestly, I don't know. It's hot. Just We'll just say it's hot and we'll leave it at that. I'm sure it's hotter in other places, <laughs> but it feels warm here for me. Uh, okay, so uh, the blanket has changed again. This time uh, it's a little single quilt that my mum made me for Christmas as a gift last year. Uh, when it's hot in the summer, I quite like to have just a cotton cover. Um, and yeah, mum made this for me. She's, she's amazing. She's so talented. So I think I'm not a quilter. I do do a little bit of English paper piecing as I talked about in my last episode. Um, and I, yeah, I do a bit of English paper piecing and kind of mess around a bit, but I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm a quilter by any stretch. I believe this is a jelly roll quilt. <laughs> so she has an amazing stash of fabric and uh, I picked out the fabric palette that I really like. As you can see, I like these colours. Um, and uh, I think this is Tilda fabric or mostly Tilda fabric. And she made me a gorgeous jelly roll quilt that, uh, yeah, is temporarily on the back of the sofa. So uh, to wait and see which uh, which blanket will be here next next episode. <laughs> but yeah, in terms of knitting um, and other crafting, I've been slowing down a lot the last couple of weeks. The weather has been really nice and I've been trying to get out and about as much as possible, sort of going swimming, spending time with friends. Oh, this weekend I went to an amazing fireworks festival. Um, I didn't take any footage because I was just enjoying spending time with friends, although I think my partner might have taken some video. Anyway, uh, it's called Rhein in Flammen and there's a summer festival that happens all the way down the, the, the River Rhine and we went to a city called Koblenz where there was a 
massive fireworks display in a big castle above the river on Saturday night. And there was a big uh, like fairground there and lots of food stalls and things. It was, yeah, it was really, really good fun. Live bands and everything. So we drove two hours on Saturday, got back at three o'clock in the morning. My point is I've been getting out and doing stuff. <laughs> so knitting, not so much, but that's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's everything I want to say. Oh, very quickly. Uh, we're running a, a we, I, this podcast, whatever. I'm running a mal, a make along at the moment uh, called the Made by Mumino Thrifty Mal. It started at the beginning of July and is running through to the end of September. And the rules are you can enter via Ravelry, Instagram, and by email. All the details are down below. And the point is to be as thrifty as possible. So, patterns you've had in stash for ages kits you haven't used, uh, gifted yarn, thrifted yarn, whatever. Um, you're more than welcome to double dip. You can enter more than once. Uh, and there's already been lots of fantastic entries. If you have a look on Instagram at the hashtag MBM thrifty mile 24, uh, there's some nice examples there. But the majority of the entries have been through Ravelry on my Ravelry group. And the link for that is down below. So feel free to to join in and any craft is welcome. My dad has even submitted some uh, rope boat fenders that he made, <laughs> some knotted boat fenders. But if he wins, I, I don't know what he'll do with the, the prizes because it's all um, yarn. Um, if you look back at my previous episodes, um, there's really kindly donated yarn from the Wee Yarn Company, um, some beautiful yak sock um, sock yarn that uh, that Ross donated. There's also some Lana Grosser sock yarn and some uh, gifted patterns. So Nancy Wheeler of the Knit Zip Happy podcast, uh, she's an amazing sock designer. She uh, is, oh, she's been in Liner magazine and uh, not Liner magazine, um, Fifty Two Weeks of Socks Volume Two. And uh, she makes beautiful sock designs and she really kindly reached out and emailed me um, and offered to donate a pattern, which is really kind. So we've got a nice little stash of patterns. Uh, pattern. <sighs> it's early in the morning. I do have a coffee. I do have a coffee. Normally when I'm filming, I have chamomile tea or coconut water, but today it's coffee. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're building up a nice little stash of prizes uh, for the Mal. Um, so yeah, check it out. Feel free to enter. Okay, we have finished objects today. And the first finished object um, is what I'm wearing. I'm wearing my first finished object. This is the Ridge Tea by JC at Bluebird Pine Shop. And this is a test knit that I did for her and um, I really enjoyed making. So I don't know if I actually need to stand up because it's really, really cropped. I do that a little bit. There we go. You can see it's really, really cropped. And we've got a nice little uh, split hem detail there. And a beautiful drop shoulder construction. Nice and simple. It's a really pretty top actually, I'm really, really happy with it. Um, it's perfect for this weather um, because it's just really nice and light and the yarn that I've chosen to make it in is um, slightly lighter than the recommended yarn in the pattern. Um, but that's just meant that it's got a slightly more open gauge, not really enough to be see-through. I mean, I'm just wearing a bra underneath here. But I think it's uh, it covers enough, but still being sort of nice and light and airy. Uh, so what to say about this? This is knit on 3.5, no, 3.75 millimeter needles. Let me just check the details. Yeah, which is a US 5. I knit this in Drops Saffron, which is 100% cotton. And the main color is sea green, I think. Yep, sea green. And then this really cute little highlight detail here on the edge. This is in marzipan, which is color 71. And again, I'll link all of this below if you want to check any of the details. I'm pretty good at keeping my Ravelry up to date. I think one or two things need updating, but I'll do that later. Um, yeah, so what to say about this? 
Uh, it's really boxy, it's very cropped. I knit this exactly to pattern. I made the fifth size um, and I knit the recommended length here. Now, what I think I am gonna do is go back and rip it back a bit. The reason I'm not standing up is because one, <laughs> I was standing on Saturday for 11 hours, I think, without sitting down. And I have problems with my knees and my left knee is, is protesting and complaining a lot. So I'm not going to stand up if that's OK. <laughs> but I'll put some pictures in here of me wearing it. They're on Instagram too. <laughs> um, yeah, what was that? What on earth was I saying? Yeah, but also the other reason is it's really, really cropped. So I, I need to wear something underneath it um, if I'm wearing a skirt. It's fine if I'm wearing it over a dress or something. But I think that I'm going to rip it back and just add an extra sort of four centimetres or, you know, a couple of inches onto the front and the back just to make it a bit easier to wear. Um, but I'll see how it goes. I'll see how it goes. Cotton does grow. The, the reason why I didn't uh, lengthen it to start off with was um, I've knit several t-shirts in cotton and several jumpers in cotton over the years. They do tend to grow as you wear them. And I just wanted to see what happened with this um, yarn because I haven't used this particular one before. Um, yeah, so Drop Saffron is, I think it comes out as a sport weight. Let me just check. It's 160 meters per 50 grams. So yeah, so like 310 meters per 100 grams. So kind of like a sport weight, I suppose. Um, and it's just, it's very light. I've only washed it the once when I blocked it. I've worn it several times since then. It hasn't needed washing yet. I mean, it's not tight fitting, so, you know, it's pretty forgiving. And I'm really, really happy with it. I absolutely love the method of picking up the stitches along here. I think that's just such a nice detail. And it's, it's just very, very, very nice to wear. A drop shoulder for me is always a good choice. I just feel like I've got plenty of movement, uh, you know, space to move up on this part. It's very flowy. It's easy to wear over uh, skirts, over trousers, over dresses, whatever is an extra, extra bit. Um, I also really like the length of the sleeves. It feels very comfortable. I think I'd be, you know, comfortable wearing this for work or whatever. So, um, yeah. It's it was a, a fun knit. Um, you couldn't just forget about it while you were knitting it because of the ridge details. So you had to just make sure that that was uh, correctly spaced. <laughs> I think I only messed up once and I realised I hadn't done enough garter or stockinette, sorry, between the ridges and I had to rip back a couple of rows, but it, it was fine. It was quite easy to read. Um, cotton is so easy to work with when you're holding it singly because you can really see, clearly see the, the, the stitches and everything. So it's nice and easy to see where you are. I'm not sure if this pattern has been released yet. So the deadline is today, I believe. Yeah, the deadline is today for this pattern and uh, the other testers um, are still working on theirs, I believe. I think a few people have finished it. But it's always the way in the summer. Everybody knits less in the summer, don't they? Especially if you've got kids and things and you're off on your summer holidays or whatever. So J JC, obviously, I, I think she has kids as well. So she's um, very generously extended the deadline a little bit to allow people more time. Um, but some other people have made this in darker colours and uh, JC's original sample in the light brown which she's done in the recommended yarn, uh, which was Drops Bell. Um, it's really, really lovely. So go and check it out on her Instagram or on her Ravelry. Uh, so Drops Bell, I've knit with before. It's a cotton viscose linen mix and it's lovely to knit with. It comes out as a DK, um, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, a DK. And it's really, really, really nice to knit with. So um, yeah, check it out. I knit mine on a 3.75 millimeter needle, a US five, but the pattern is written for a uh, four millimeter, which is a US six. So it would, it does knit up quite quickly if you're looking for a, a quick warm weather knit um, for yourself. I don't think there's anything else to say about this. Really nice pattern, nice and simple. Should be coming out relatively soon, I imagine. Um, the pattern was dead easy to follow, zero problems whatsoever. I can't recommend JC's patterns enough. 
Um, and uh, yeah, nothing else to say about that. Okay, so my second finished object is the muscle bra. So I always keep a project in my handbag from, for when I'm out and about, waiting in doctor surgeries, that kind of thing. And uh, this is uh, usually a gift knit for somebody. And in this case, I've made a muscle bra for a family member. This will go into the gift pile ready for, ready for Christmas. Say it really, really quietly. I know. <laughs> So I've talked about this uh, in several episodes. It's one of my favourite patterns. I love it. Um, it's so versatile. You can knit this pattern in a variety of weights, um, needle sizes, and um, the designer gives you the method of working out what gauge you need to do, what size you need to do at the beginning of the pattern. So the pattern in itself is the gauge swatch. So you cast on at one end, begin knitting for about an inch, and then take the gauge swatch from this part here. And then it tells you, using some very simple maths, how um, how much knitting you need to do and how many increases you need to do for each of these sections. And you basically knit a tube. Uh, it's mindless knitting. <laughs> Other than the increases and the decreases, this is mindless knitting and it's a perfect handbag project. The only tricky part of this, for me anyway, is the cast on, because you need to cast on a very small amount of stitches and a very small uh, circumference. I am not a crocheter. I imagine the easiest way to start this, I imagine the, easy, the easiest way to start this would be to, um, uh, to crochet. But as I'm not a crocheter, I cannot do that. Uh, yeah, this is knit in drops Nord in the colour Lemongrass Mix. It was left over from a Lento project that I did a couple of months ago. And it's just a really nice colour, really nice and soft and squishy. I think this has got a bit of a an alpaca mix to it. Yeah, this is 45% alpaca, 30% nylon and 25% wool. So for, as a gift knit, this is perfect. I don't like to give non-knitters yarn that's uh that's more not more difficult to look after but you have to be a bit more mindful of <clears throat> especially as you know my both my sisters have got kids and things they don't want to be bothering with blocking and blah 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 every time they want to, to wash something so i like to give them things that can be put in the washing machine on a wall wash and this is one of them so yes a nice simple hat uh and yeah, I imagine this will be going to California because one of my sisters lives in uh, just above San Francisco in a place uh, called Novato. Um, and she's got three boys. Um, and uh, yeah, I imagine this will be going to one of them for when they go up to Lake Tahoe for skiing and stuff. So uh, either that or it'll get chucked in a drawer and forgotten because Auntie Catherine's made yet another weird hat for them. That's fine too. <laughs> I enjoy doing it. It keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> So that's my second finished object, and I don't think I've got any other finished objects today. No. So we'll move on to works in progress, to whips. Okay, I'm pausing between each section and I'll put them together because my phone is full <laughs> and I'm having trouble uh, transferring the, the, video, the video files over to my computer when I finished each time when I'm filming. So I'm trying to make shorter, shorter videos to, uh, to transfer over. Okay, I've got several whips on the go at the moment, one of which I'm really, really excited about, but it's going to be quite difficult to show you. I'm doing a test knit for Sharon of Kleinisch Kaitenliebe. Is that how you say it? I think so. And uh, it's gorgeous. I'll put a, post a poster. I'll put a picture of it up here. It's called the Meadow Flower Wrap. So the designer is German and the pattern is being tested in German and in English at the moment and um, it's unbelievably pretty. I love this pattern so much. I saw it and I pretty much just like stalked this uh, anything to do with this pattern until the, the test call went out because I really really wanted to do it. <laughs> it's uh, the construction is uh, bottom up. You start with the long ties and then work your way up the body to under the arms where you pause and start making the sleeves bottom up. 
and that's the stage that I'm at at the moment. I'm. Let's talk about the yarn first. So this is in my lovely Eldenwood craft bag. I've talked about these many times. I am using a beautiful BFL linen mix from Wool and Twine. And I talked about this yarn quite a lot on the last episode, so I won't spend too long on it. But this is a sport weight. It's it's called linen four ply, but it's 350 meters per hundred grams. So it's it's a it's a heavy it's a heavy four ply going towards a sport weight. And the colorway for this is hickory. Um, it's spun in the UK, and it is what's the 25 percent. Uh, natural unbleached linen and 75% BFL and it's beautiful to work with. I'm really enjoying this. I got four skeins of this. Um, I'm hoping it's enough. If it's not, I'm going to have snacks because you can't get this anymore. This is the, this is it. <laughs> so Hula in uh, Wool and Twine, she is a really mindful yarn creator and um, she does these beautiful short runs of various colours and even the ones that are in her sort of more permanent stock because she uses uh, sort of more natural dyes and things that they're, they're very difficult to replicate. In fairness, any hand dyed yarn is difficult to replicate. Um, so you do need to get what you think you'll need in the first go. And I bought all four skeins that she had left. So I'm hoping this will be enough. It should be fine. If not, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. But yes that's what I'm using and this is where I'm at at the moment like I said this is going to be quite difficult to show you I have knit these straps or the the, uh, the the ribbons oh good lord I should have sorted this out before starting <laughs> so it looks like a little bit of a, a mess at the moment but you can kind of see the stitch pattern there This yarn is so lovely. And then these long ribbons that also have the motif, the meadow flower motif on them as well. So as I said, you begin with the uh, ties on either side. You then cast on the body, which is as wide as it's going to get because it, it, as, as you can see, it's a wrap. So those those pieces at the bottom are the, the, the widest part. So it feels like a lot of stitches to start off with, but you immediately start decreasing uh, for the body. You uh, place markers for what would be the, the sort of side seams. And next to one of those, you make a little, I'm trying to find it now. You make a little hole, if you can see that. Just there, to put the ties through and then work your way up the body. It's quite short in the body um, because it's just a little wrap and you mark where your arms are going to be. And I imagine we'll insert those after after finishing, after finishing the sleeves. Um, it's a really lovely pattern. It's very, very, very pretty, very, um, very delicate looking. I can imagine wearing this in lots of different situations over a, a variety of outfits. I, I, I'm, really excited to, to have this one finished and off the needles but at the same time I'm really enjoying the process of knitting it it's reasonably mindful because you do several rows of stockinette before you need to put in the meadow flower details um, but it's it's just it, it's a really nice pattern I'm really enjoying the process of making this and I don't want to rush through this too quickly so there's lots of lots of ribbon going on there <laughs> a bit difficult to show you this one. It's a bit easier maybe to show you the um, the sleeve, one of the sleeves that I've uh, started doing. Oh, you can see the pattern really beautifully there. Oh, it's such a beautiful, beautiful pattern. I'm really excited about this. I'd be tempted maybe after I finish this one in the future sometime to make a plain one too, or maybe one that only has the... Um, meadow flower pattern on the on the body or something just uh, for a bit of variety but yeah really pretty and I've got a really cute little stitch marker there there's a, a German uh, lady who makes stitch markers what's her name knit mates up in Hamburg 
and uh, she makes these really pretty little stitch markers with lots of sort of semi-precious stones and things on them and little um, minerals and, and so on. They're really pretty. And I love her stitch markers. I'll link her Etsy shop down below. But yeah, this, um, this was an interesting pattern because uh, the designer didn't give a, um, a specific needle size that you needed to use. She gave a needle range to use. I really like that. I really like that because it encouraged you to really think about it when you were gauge swatching. So I looked at the yarn that I had. The recommended yarn for the pattern, I think, is a BC Garn Melange, um, which is a, it's a sport weight yarn. Uh, but I wanted to use this um because i really really love the color uh but these the range that the designer gave was what did, where was it i think it was three to four millimeters so quite a wide um, gauge uh, range uh, and obviously getting the gauge was very important because you're doing it bottom up because you need a little bit of negative ease it needs to be really specific so your row gauge in particular needs to be spot on um so that you end up with the right size at the end um, so this is one of the times I actually really did properly gauge swatch. <laughs> I looked at the yarn and I thought that looks like it'll be good for a 3.5 millimeter, which is a US 4. And luckily I was right. So I only had to do the one gauge swatch and I hit the gauge exactly, which was 26 stitches for, um, for 36 rows in a 10 centimeter stockinette to swatch. One thing I do recommend that you do if you get this pattern once it's released, is when you're doing your gauge swatch, add in a couple of these little flower motifs as you're going along. They're not, they're not tricky to do, they're not difficult, but they are a little bit fiddly. And I really appreciated having the practice time in the gauge to, in the gauge swatch, sorry, to, to practice my technique of doing it and how I was gonna go through and pick up the stitches. Um, to, to make these pretty little uh, little flower details. And it was really handy actually making a few of them in the gauge swatch. So yeah, that is the Meadow Flower Wrap. This has got a really long test window on it. I think it's, yeah, the 18th of September is the deadline, but I imagine it'll be released fairly quickly after that. Um, like I said, this is being tested in German and in English. I'm testing the English version and there's been a few little things, but nothing out of the way for um, uh, changes to the pattern or little. And, and the designer, Sharon, she's been so fast. As soon as any of the testers have spotted something immediately. Yep, yeah, that's OK. Yep, yeah, I'll change that. Already done. I mean, she's been all over it. I haven't tested for this designer before. Um, but I definitely would again. She's She's been absolutely wonderful so far and uh, yeah, really enjoying making this. I've been looking through all of her other patterns as well and she's got this wonderful aesthetic. It's very pretty, very um, gentle, very natural looking and it's, um, yeah, check out her patterns. It's, uh, she, she's made some really nice things. I don't think I've got anything else to say about that. Just check in my notes. No, I think that's it. So coming soon, but the designer has already put it on Ravelry so you can have a look at the pictures. This deadline is the 18th of September, so it's not gonna be out for a little while, but I'll keep you posted. Hopefully I'll finish this in the next few weeks. Um, but I will be sad to finish this one, I will be sad. Okay, next whip. Next whip. <laughs> I talked about this bag in my last episode, made by my mum from, definitely from Liberty Fabric. She designed this herself. No, she doesn't sell them. She really should think about it though. <laughs> okay, in this bag, I am using my Christmas bag because this is a Christmas present for one of my brothers. And I'm making him a stripy puntal. Puntal, sorry. I spoke to the designer on Instagram. Somebody really kindly corrected, or um, not corrected, but um, uh, improved my pronunciation or gave a suggestion after the last episode. Of course, it's Spanish. <laughs> I don't speak any Spanish, sadly. I speak several several languages a little bit, but no, no Spanish, sadly. I can order beer. That's about it. <laughs> the important things though, right? 
Um, but yeah, this is the, the Puntal and uh, the designer told me that uh, this is named after a beach that she used to go to when she was a child. Um, she was so sweet. She was saying even Spanish speakers have a problem sometimes saying the word. So I'm sure she was just being kind, but anyway. <laughs> so this is the Puntal and I'm making it with lots of leftovers for one of my little brothers. I keep talking about my brothers and my sisters. I'm the eldest of five children. Um, uh, I have two little sisters and two little brothers. And both of my brothers are a lot taller than I am. So they're not really my little brothers, little big brothers. <laughs> so this is for one of my brothers anyway. Uh, and I'm just making it out of lots of scraps of woolly knit and other four ply British or uh, Shetland wool. Um, and yeah, that's that's it really. Um, it's a really, really nice pattern I've made, as I talked about a lot in my last episode. I've made lots of these jumpers for various people. It's a very simple pattern, very easy to follow, really logical and uh, lots and lots of help and hints and tips of how to get it right, especially if this is your first raglan jumper. Can't recommend this pattern enough. It's a, it's a, it's a great pattern for beginners. As I talked about in the last episode, I do a couple of modifications. So firstly, I don't start with the collar as in the pattern. I start at the row where the body begins and then I go back and I add the collar afterwards. It's not sitting very well at the moment. It needs blocking. Once it's blocked, it'll be absolutely fine. And then I go down the body. So the original pattern isn't striped. It is blocked at uh, block colors. So there's color one, and then a wide stripe for colour two, and then the rest in colour three. Um, but it's very easy to, to adapt this to whatever stripe pattern you want. The other, other modification I do, which I do for most of the jumpers or, or garments that I make, I cast on extra stitches underneath the arm. So one in each corner, and then I knit two together at each corner when I do my first round of the body. Again, I talked about it in the last episode. So if you want more details, just go and, go and have a look at that. Um, yeah, this is um, progressing nicely. I haven't done that much on it because it's been quite hot and this is woolly wool and it just uh, feels a little bit warm to knit on at the moment. But there's a bag full of cones. <laughs> I'm working my way through them um, and uh, yeah that's that nothing else to say about that really and I think that is oh no I've got one more whip on the needles so this is an uh, my new handbag project and this is a watch cap from Pearl Soho I'll pop a picture up here for you so you can see what this will look like. This is a free pattern. It's a two by two rib. It's one of my favorite hat patterns. It's perfect for a nice squishy DK wool. Um, it would all, it's also good for a fingering weight held with a mohair. I've made one of those versions as well. In fact, I've made this with a DK held with mohair as well, I think. Yeah, I think I did. Um, and it just makes a beautiful squishy rib and I love this pattern. I'm knitting this on Addi Trios. These are bamboo um, needles and I find these really handy for if I'm traveling. I, I tend to knit with these in my handbag. It feels safer. So whenever we're driving somewhere, whenever my partner's driving, I usually knit. <laughs> I feel like I'm safer just in case we had an accident or something. If I'm knitting with bamboo rather than my higher, higher sharps, which are like surgical steel needles, <laughs> it, this just feels a bit safer. Also, I touch wood. So far, I haven't had any problems taking these on planes. Um, uh, just, I tend to go back and forth to the UK a few times a year or sometimes on longer trips outside of Europe as well. And touch wood, I haven't had any problems yet. But uh, watch the space because I'm traveling to Thailand in a few weeks. <laughs> I don't know if I'll take any knitting on the plane. I would like to, but uh, see how I get on with these. I'm knitting this in uh, Atelier Zitron Tasmanian Tweed in the colourway. What colourway am I doing this in? Colourway, oh, number two, Stone. 
and it's just a really squishy, very, very soft yarn. I made myself a Stockholm slipover out of this um, and I had two balls left over. So I thought I'd make one of the, uh, one, uh, come on, Catherine. <laughs> I thought I'd make a hat with the leftovers to put in the gift pile. What is the makeup of this yarn? It is 95% merino and 5% viscose, which is probably where the sort of the silky softness comes from. It is really silky, very soft, perfect for making hats. I think this would make a really nice headband as well. Hmm. I'm trying to focus on using leftovers for um, any gift knitting I do this year, but I am tempted to get another ball of this to make a, a headband at some point. Anyway. So I'm making the, uh, this is a medium size or an adult medium, I think, uh, watch cap from Pearl Soho. I've got quite a big head. So I tend to, when I finished a hat, ooh, fly. when I finished a hat, I'll try it on and see if, how it feels on me to then gauge who I give it to. <laughs> but I think I have in my mind who, who's going to get this, but it's uh, beautiful and squishy. Very, very, very soft, very soft. So that is that. And I think that's all my projects for this week that I'm going to talk about. I am so excited about a new test knit that I'm doing. I don't have any yarn for it yet. I haven't even printed the pattern out. So I'll put a picture up here in just a moment. So I'm going to be doing a test knit for the Pacific Knit Co. And I've done a test knit for her a couple of times, um, Jamie Lomax. And no, one test knit for her. No, two. One. I can't remember. I've knitted several of her patterns. Let's just leave it at that. Um, so Jamie makes the doodle decks. She does these incredible sets of um, little knitting, knitting charts to make your own customizable doodle scarves, cowls, hats, everything you can think of. They're just so clever and they're so much fun. Um, yes, one test knit, but I also purchased lots of her patterns as well. Yes, that's it. The last year for myself, my advent project, I made myself a, a winter doodle infinity cowl. And it was so much fun. I loved it. And I thought this would be so cool to have as a jumper. And then Jamie started talking about designing and testing a, a jumper using the same, um, the same idea of doodling. And I was oh, I'm so excited about this. I've wanted to make myself some sort of festive pullover for, well since I came back to knitting but it feels like such a big commitment it needs to be perfect you're only going to be wearing this for a few months maximum every year so in my head it needs to be wintry rather than specifically Christmassy and it needs to be not in your face for me anyway not in your face Christmas colours kind of muted I saw this pattern and I thought wow I really really want to do this this is so cool this is exactly what I was looking for in the um, image that I've put up there, you can see that it's all over colour work, but Jamie, the designer, is more than happy for us to, for the testing group, a massive testing group. I think there's about 80 people or something in the testing group. She's more than happy for us to um, customise it in any way that we want. So I think what I'm going to do is a yoke up to the armholes, so not a very deep yoke. Um, and I'm going to stick to a two colour palette, I think. I haven't 100% decided yet. I haven't bought my yarn yet. I'm still thinking about it. There's a really long deadline on this, which is, I think, the end of October. I'm going back to the UK to spend some time with my family or to, to see my family. Uh, end of September, beginning of October, I think. So I'm going to go yarn shopping with my mum then, I think. And... Um, yeah, I'll, I'll choose what I'm going to get then because I kind of have an idea in my mind of what I want. Uh, when I was at Wonderwall earlier on this year, I saw the Yarnadelic range from John Arben and fell in love with it. And I've been looking for the right project to use that yarn with. I'm thinking this might be the time to, to get a sweater quantity. So I'm thinking of kind of a darkish red kind of colour, sort of a pinky, maroony, dark not too scarlet um, red colour as my main colour, and then an off-white sort of pinky creamy colour 
for my uh, contrast. And I'm thinking that's going to produce a really, um, I don't know what the right word is, not understated, but an e a nice easy to wear winter pullover rather than a specifically this is a Christmas sweater. Not that there's anything wrong with that and I love Christmas sweaters. I've, I've owned several in the past, um, but I want to make something that I can wear throughout the winter season. So yeah, let me know what you think. Um, if you've got any ideas for colours uh, that that, um, that you've worked with from, from John Arbor, I'm looking for something in a sport weight um, and also kind of trying to think outside the box a bit. For me, Christmas is, uh, or festive colours, they're very traditionally kind of red, green and white, that kind of thing. Oh, also the colour of an Italian salad. But anyway, <laughs> but I know that for a lot of people, they prefer a sort of a, a, a sort of, aqua silvers that kind of thing for for their um sort of more winter palettes i mean for me that's a summer color it's so, it's so interesting isn't it how different we all are and what what appeals to us but um if, if you're going to be working on a winter pullover i'd love to hear about it if you've got some plans i, I was even starting to collect together a few different plans a few different patterns with the intention of making a festive pullover this year I picked up um, You'll Do from Isabel Kramer. I picked up uh, from Eleanor Mortensen, this pattern here. I'll put up a picture up here and I'll write it down here with the horses on it. <clears throat> it's a beautiful pattern. It doesn't scream for Christmas or anything, but for me, it's kind of Swedish horses at, at Christmas at, at sort of the, the, as a festive decoration. You see them in, in Ikea and everything. Um, so yeah, I was starting to think about what to do this year because I fully intended to make myself a festive pullover and then this just landed in my lap. So knitting plans, I'm definitely going to be making that, just still thinking about colour palettes and yeah, it's interesting to see what all of the other testers are all, already doing because it's such a wide range of different ideas. Some people are making it in cotton um, and definitely a wide range of colours and not the traditional sort of festive colours, which is fantastic. So keep an eye on Instagram for that, but there's a long um, deadline. So it's gonna be quite a while, I think, before before that one comes out. I think the release is planned for the 1st of November. So, uh, so yeah, watch this space and I'll let you know how I get on. Now, acquisitions. So while I was in Aachen, uh, I, I felt it'd be rude not to buy some yarn and my partner really pushed me into it. So the <laughs> uh, they do this really nice, uh, it's a really, really interesting way of um, displaying the yarn. Not only do they have yarn on, on, on the walls and on shelves and everything, <clears throat> around the, the floor and around the edges, they have thick paper bags made up with sweater quantities of yarn. And for my partner, who's not a knitter, he likes to browse those because he can really quickly see, okay, that's isolated. That's a quantity for making a sweater. I like that colour. Do you, Catherine, do you like this? <laughs> and he saw some yarn um, in, made up as a sweater quantity and he really loved the colour and I liked it too. So I picked it up. And it's this. It's Lana Grossa. And it's a nice alpaca mix and a kind of really pretty peachy creamy melange sort of color this is 63 percent cotton 31 percent baby alpaca and six percent wool um and it's really really light and airy and i'm thinking this needs to be made into maybe a love note or a lento another lento maybe might make a love note oh or maybe a ranunculus i'll be meaning to make another ranunculus we shall see so anyway, that's going to go and sit in my stash and mind its own business. Oh, I forgot to say the name of the yarn shop that I went to. It's called Gorg und Gorg. So in uh, with anglicised pronunciation, we'd say George and George, I think. But it's got the O with the umlaut. Um, and you'll see some footage of this uh, of the shop at the end now. But they're so lovely in there. They're so helpful and so sweet. Uh, you'll see at the end there's some footage of uh, the owner with one of the members of staff there and they were just just lovely just really really nice people I strongly recommend going there um, if you're ever in Arkin and having a little mooch there got a lovely selection of yarn 
Anyway, I picked this up, but I also picked this up for myself and I've been meaning to try this out for quite some time. This is Cashmere Dreams from Lang Yarn. It's 65% cashmere, 35% silk. And it's 290 meters per 25 grams. So very much a, a lace weight yarn. My intention with this is to hold it with another yarn um, to make a hat for myself. So I don't have any problems with scratchy wool, rustic wool, whatever you want to call it. Apart from here, um, if I get a bit hot and sweaty and I, I find I just get a really itchy forehead if the yarn is a bit too scritchy. So my plan is to uh, make myself a hat, but holding this with, uh, with the hat, uh, with, with the, oh, I cannot talk today, but holding this with the yarn <laughs> just for the brim. <laughs> to make it a little bit softer so that hopefully it's a bit easier to wear for me but also it's just so soft and gorgeous I couldn't resist so that's that and I forgot to say what the meterage for this one was this is 125 meters for 50 grams so kind of like a DK weight for this one so that's what I bought there and that is it for today so um as i said i had a lovely time in arkan and um the shop owner and uh the, the other people there were absolutely wonderful so accommodating and so welcoming um i did try and go and film a few weeks ago there as i said in my last episode but they just had the delivery of all of their winter and autumn stock uh so they asked me if, if it'd be possible to arrange an appointment to come back another time so i did and uh, uh, my partner and i had a lovely day out uh, and uh, yeah, Arkin's a really, really beautiful city and um, I'm really happy to share it with you. So that is it for this week. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. If you've made it to the end, congratulations. I'd love to hear what you're knitting on at the moment. Um, I'd love to hear if you're entering the Made by Mumino or MBM Thrifty Mal. Um, go and check out the hashtag. All entries are welcome, even current whips. Um, and uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you and I hope you enjoy the footage of me wandering around Arkham and, and making irresponsible decisions in a yarn shop. Have a lovely week and I'll speak to you again very soon. Bye.